A very warm welcome to Christian Meditation. The whole session lasts about 50 minutes. We meditate in the Centering Prayer tradition, beginning with an opening prayer, followed by reflections, and then 25 minutes of silence. We believe this practice leads us towards a more contemplative life. Enjoy your meditation and thank you for being with us. Opening Prayer Eternal God, through our meditation, may the ears of our hearts be attentive to your word. May we seek and find you. Awaken to your presence, may we be joyful, embodying peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-awareness. May we follow your teaching, seeking also the wisdom of the Holy Fathers and Mothers. May we therefore commit to community, love of earth, stability, peace and justice making. Amen. The monk, already by baptism dead to sin, and consecrated to God is by profession still more totally dedicated to blessed is the glory of the Lord the Christ word of the Father for all times men were chosen by the Holy Spirit to live a life of solitude and to unite them in an intimate love answering this calling master Bruno in the year of our Lord, 1084, entered the desert of Chartres with six companions and began life there. Born in Cologne around 1030, Bruno began studying at the school of the Cathedral of Reims at an early age made a doctor, canon of the cathedral chapter, he is made the rector of the university in 1056. He was one of the most remarkable scholars and teachers of his time, a prudent man whose word was rich in meaning. He finds himself less and less at ease in a city where scandal has little effect towards the clergy and the bishop himself, after having fought, not without success, against this disorder, Bruno feels the desire of a life more completely given to God alone. After an attempt at solitary life of short duration, he enters the region of Grenoble, of which the bishop, the future St. Hughes offers him a solitary site in the mountains of his diocese. In June 1084, the bishop himself leads Bruno and six of his companions in the primitive valley of Chartres, where the order eventually gets its name from. They built a hermitage, consisting of a few log cabins opening towards a gallery which allowed them access to communal areas of the community, church, refectory, and chapter room, without having to, sum up, to suffer too much from intemperate conditions. After six years of a pleasant, solitary life, Bruno is called by Pope Urban to the service of the Holy See, not thinking of being able to continue without him, his, continue, his community first think of separating, but it allows it, itself to be convinced to follow in the life that he first formed. Advisor to the Pope, Bruno is ill at ease at the Pontifical Court. He only lives in Rome for a few months. 
with the Pope's blessing, he establishes a new hermitage in the forests of Calabria, in the south of Italy, with a few new companions. There he dies on the 6th October 1101. Bruno deserves to be praised for many a thing, but especially in this matter. He was always a man of even temper. That was his speciality. His face was always joyful, and he was modest of tongue. He led with the authority of a father, and the tenderness of a mother. No one found him too proud, but gentle like a lamb. Other hermitages were established, imitating La Grande Chartreuse, another repeated insistence of Guies, the fifth prior of Chartreuse, wrote a description of the way of life, the customs or Carthusian usage, which around 1127. All adopted and decided to conform for it became their law of observance and the link of charity of their emerging family. It was the same Guiège that rebuilt the hermitage on the actual grounds of La Grande Chartreuse after an avalanche destroyed the first hermitage in 1132, killing seven monks under the snow. The only goal of the Carthusian way is contemplation. By the power of the Spirit, living as unceasingly as possible in the light of the God, for us made manifest in Christ. This implies a purity of heart or charity. As Matthew says, blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Monastic tradition also calls this goal pure and continuous prayer. All mo monastic life thus consists of this journey to the heart, and all meaning of the monk's life is orientated to this end. It helps the monk unite his life to charity, introducing it to the depths of his heart. Truthfully, it is not this end which distinguishes Carthusians from other contemplative monks, but the borrowed path, of which the essential characteristics are the solitude, a positive mixture of solitary and community life, and the Carthusian liturgy. The primary application of our vocation is to give ourselves to the silence and solitude of, of the self. It is holy ground, the area where God and his servant hold, hold frequent conversations as between friends. There, the soul often unites itself to the word of God, bride to the groom, the earth to the sky man to the divine. Separation from the world is made possible by the cloister. Carthusian monks or nuns only leave the monastery for an occasional walk. They do not receive visits or exercise any outside apostolate. They have neither radio nor television in the monastery. It is the prior who receives news and tells the monks what they need to know. As such, 
the necessary conditions for internal silence develop, which then permit the soul to stay alert and attentive to the presence of God. The cell is a hermitage arranged in such a manner as to assure the Carthusian a solitude as complete as possible while giving all the necessities of life. Each cell consists of a two-storey building surrounded by a garden where the monk lives alone for most of the, the day for the duration of his life. Writing this homily, I found myself considering whether I could consider such a life. The truth is that I enjoy the earthly comforts of this world too much. My family, my friends, my community and of course my church life. The cloister and cell only assure an external solitude. It is only the first step whose goals is to encourage interior solitude or purity of heart, to keep one's soul away from any and all things not of God or which do not lead to God. It is at this level the Carthusian meets the sudden impulses of his thought and the changes of his feelings. As long as the monk discusses with his self his sensibilities, his worthless thoughts, unreal desires, he is not centred on God. It is here that he experiences his weakness and the power of the spirit, which he learns bit by bit. The habit of the tranquil listening of the heart, which allows God to enter by all paths and access from the statutes. A Carthusian monastery consists of cloistered monks, priests, or those destined to become priests, and monks. Cloistered monks live in the strictest of solitude. They do not leave their cells other than when allowed by the rule. They occupy their time with prayer, reading and work. The brothers ensure that the various needs of the monastery are met by their work outside of the cells, such as cooking, carpentry, laundry. It is a unique ideal lived in two different ways. The brothers work in as much silence as solitude as possible. To have their share of life in the cell for reading and prayer, yet it is yes let demanding than the fathers. That is why their cells are smaller both in ways of life complement one another to form the unique charter house and correspond to the different aptitudes of those who wish to live a Carthusian life. Within the group of brothers, there are two categories. Those called converts, that take the exact same vows as the fathers and that of the donates. The donates are monks who do not take the vows, but for the love of Christ give themselves to the order by mutual agreement. They have their own set of customs which differ slightly from those of the converts. For instance, their help during the offices 
most notable during the night office, is not as strict. They live without owning anything. After seven years, they can fully enter the order or renew their donation. The gift of God is not any less than that of the other monks, as they tackle tasks and duties less compatible to those of the converts. As we enter this time of meditation, let us consider the life of a Carthusian monk or nun. An entire life dedicated to speaking to, listening to, and worshipping God. A life of sacrifice in the way of the Desert Fathers. There is always a Carthusian somewhere in the world, praying for the world, for you and for me. Beginning Meditation Before beginning our meditation, you may wish to adjust your posture. You may wish to pay particular attention to the rhythm of your breath, taking a calming deep breath in through your nose and a slow breath out, letting go fully. You may wish to repeat this a few times. If you have a sacred word, you might notice its rhythm, perhaps noticing how your word is in time with the breath.
Closing Prayer Loving and Eternal God We thank you for the gifts of prayer, meditation and contemplation. We thank you for being with us and for this community. May we therefore pray with all others as one community, one world and one spirit to one God. Moments of your personal prayer follow. Amen. Thank you for meditating with us. Please join us again soon.